If you're looking for success in the vacation rental industry, Heather Bayer and the team at CottageBlogger.com are here to show you that it's entirely within reach. Welcome to Vacation Rental Success, the show that features interviews with industry experts, successful vacation rental owners, and more, all geared toward helping you make it happen. Here's your host, Heather Bayer. Well, hello again. Welcome to another episode of Vacation Rental Success, and we're having a heat wave. I would sing to you, but trust me, this this would not be a good idea. But uh, yeah, seriously, folks, we are having a heat wave. It's official. Uh, the Weather Network and the news tell us we are in an official heat wave. Apparently, that uh, that that designation is issued when the temperature goes above um, thirty one degrees centigrade. I think um, maybe wrong, maybe out one or two. But uh, suffice to say, it's hot. It's humid, and and I've finally given in and put the air conditioning on. That's the way it goes. I, I, I'm a Brit, and we don't usually – We very few people have air conditioning in the UK, so it's quite unusual um, for me to actually get to that point where I'm putting the air conditioning on. But, it, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's a little bit too hot and sticky. I do feel it for many of our cottage rental guests this week who are in properties without air conditioning – but, you know, every one of those properties is on some form of waterfront, whether it's a river or a lake or you know one of the Great Lakes. People are out there enjoying the water. So, you know, they can cool off. But it's, it's interesting the way that guest assumptions are changing. I mean, we talked before about how guest expectations are rising. But I'm quite amazed now to uh, to hear from people who have as- assumptions about the properties they're going to. Um, and one of the assumptions is that every property has air conditioning. They can't understand. Because they come out of the city, as you know, around about 85 90%, maybe more of our guests come out of the city of Toronto. Many of them have never actually been out of the city before. They've that they they just don't do it. There's you know there's a big wall around the city and um, you know, they don't get let out very often. Now that's that's not that's not actually serious. But uh, most people don't leave the city, and of course they live in their air conditioned environments. They uh, they they very rarely go out in the open because they can quite often go out of their condo building straight down to a subway station and and just climb on the subway and go to work and then come out and go into their office, their air-conditioned offices. So getting out to a cottage to find that they have to battle the heat and the humidity without uh, w- without having it, it cooled down as they are at home, they find that quite quite difficult to manage and Many don't expect how it's going to be when they when they actually get there. So we're dealing with a lot of that this week. Uh, the, and the other assumption that uh, that we're getting from many many cottage rental guests is they they assume there will be uh, Wi-Fi and that it's unlimited and they can log on and download and stream to their heart's content. And we've had a couple. This is the first year, in fact, that we have had. Uh, overages that we've had to charge for, so uh, that that's something new we've uh, we've been dealing with. So we spend a lot of our time prior to guests going into cottages, managing those expectations, and and now trying to deal with with these assumptions uh, to the point where we're thinking now that in you know where we list what amenities are, of course we're going to be doing that, but also to be making a note and saying what there isn't available. So please note there is no air conditioning. Please note there is no Wi-Fi. Um, Please note there is no dishwasher. That's another assumption that everybody assumes that 
they're going away to a, a vacation rental, cottage rental, villa rental, whatever you whatever they want to call it, and that there is going to be a dishwasher. And of course, for many, there isn't, and there's no laundry, and they have to use a local laundromat. So it's a it may become a matter of having to tell people what is not there and learning to manage those um, those assumptions. So today we are staying very much up here in cottage country. And because my guest today is, is somebody that I've known for a long time, for many, many years, in fact. And he is the founder of CanadaStays.com. In fact, which was formerly known as CottageCountry.com. So I'm delighted to welcome to Vacation Rental Success, Mark Bordeaux, the founder and CEO of Canada Stays. So I'm delighted to have with me today, founder and CEO of Canada Stays, Mark Bordeaux. Hi, Mark. How are you doing? I'm doing great, Heather. How are you? I'm doing really, really well. I'm so pleased to be talking to you. I mean, you and I go back a long way. Um, I was trying to figure out the other day when we first talked. Yeah, and I was thinking about that today. I think it was sometime around 2009. And I believe you did a review of the very first version of cottagecountry.com that we had uh, available. And that was the first time that you and I met. Um, probably uh, wanted some marketing partnership or something along those lines. And it turned out to be a, uh, an interview and a review of the very first version we ever had of our website. Oh, I really need to go back to that because I, we're actually um, looking right through the archives of, of Cottage Blogger the other day. And, and I'm sure that must, have, uh, that, that must have come up. So I'll have to go and check that. But yeah, so, uh, so yeah, quite some time ago, um, and uh, yeah, I really want to explore how you kicked off with cottagecountry.com, how it evolved into what is today as Canada stays. We're going to talk about the the great news that, that you had with the funding earlier this year and how that is impacting your business practice and how it's going to impact your client's experience with Canada Stays. And, and I have to say, um, as, as a client of yours, and I've been a client of yours ever since the, uh, the, the beginnings of cottagecountry.com, you know, I appreciate that very much. <laughs> and we've followed you along all the way. And you know that, um, you know, I've been skeptical at times, and we're going to touch on that as well, because I've got boomer tendencies and I is it's just recently when I'm beginning to break out of that and and to see how this industry really is growing uh, growing and going. Um so these are all the things I want to touch on but I, I'd love to start with you know what got you into cottage the whole issue of vacation rental cottage rental in the first place. Did you have experiences with a rental before you started cottagecountry.com? Yes, absolutely. So um, I had in my, I call it my previous life before I got into vacation rentals, I was working with a pretty good web development team and had a lot of experience uh, building websites, uh, specifically for the home improvement industry in Canada. And, you know, the story is, is really something that you would expect. It was the idea was born out of personal experience where I was trying to um, go up to uh, Muskoka from Toronto uh, with my now wife, but then fiance probably. Um, and we wanted the true Muskoka experience, exactly what you would think you would get from Muskoka, some nature, some quiet, and uh, we wanted to bring our dog with us. So we had no idea where to begin to look for that. And at that time, cottage rental sites uh, were far and few between and none of them were branded so uh, we ended up at a hotel um, in the Muskoka area and we got there and the hotel was completely crowded. Um, the beach had a beach volleyball tournament going on. It was run down and really not at all what we were looking for um, in our trip to Muskoka. And we actually turned around and left and went home. And on the way home, I started to think about how we could better serve people exactly like us. And 
how we could find um, better accommodations for more of the experience that we were looking for. And funny enough, my family, my entire family, later on that summer decided to rent a cottage. And they rented a cottage and we were all a bit skeptical. There were only about three photos of this cottage. And we arrived at the cottage and it was, uh, it was quite dirty, um, although it was, it was acceptable. And uh, the funniest part that I remember about this was that the pictures we saw were of a beautiful waterfront. Um, and when we went out to the water, in fact, there was the beautiful waterfront that we saw from the pictures. But if you panned a little bit to the left, what the photos didn't show was that it was basically like a marina parking lot um, just to the uh, just off to the side of the end of uh, one of the photos. And so uh, while we enjoyed the cottage and enjoyed the week, the experience was really limited because the swimming was awful because it was constant boat traffic and constant boats parking literally right beside the cottage. So um, after that experience, I said, OK, uh, my team can do this much more effectively. We can not only provide great web pages that are going to depict all the information, but we can also put together a website that's going to be easy to find and easy to use. And uh, from there, we really started planning it out. And that's where that's how I got into the industry it was really just due to personal experience. Well, it has changed so, so significantly over the past uh, 10 or 12 years. I mean, even in the time that I've been out here living in Ontario, it's changed. I remember when when we first started renting our properties, we put them in. Do you remember Tyler's? Cottage Magazine. Absolutely, I remember that. The catalogue. Everybody got the catalogue every every spring. You couldn't wait for that catalogue to come out. And it just had, you know, one, you know, I think if you paid the little bit extra, you could have two grainy black and white pictures and yep. and probably about, um, I don't know, maybe 20, char- 20 words or something like that to describe it. And that's all we had to go on. Right. And that information in that catalog would never be updated. Uh, tonight, or today, we're in a situation where we have hundreds of customers that are running their um, cottage listings and their vacation rental listings on web feeds that get updated on a nightly basis with all new data every single night. So, yes, I mean, it, it certainly has come a long way since... Tyler's. And so, so you started with um, with a bit of help, didn't you? In terms of help, we had, there were really, from the get-go, there were only two of us. Um, and we pretty quickly had some uh, ties with Rogers and Rogers Ventures Partners specifically. And we discussed the idea with Rogers about really bringing the website to the forefront in Canada and working with them on their distribution. They jumped at it. And so almost from the inception, uh, we were moved into the Rogers offices and pretty quickly uh, grew a team of people to start building this website with Rogers helping us immensely in the early days of our distribution. Yeah, I remember that. I remember coming down and meeting you uh, at the Rogers offices and I, I was just blown away by this sort of this, this incubator um, area that they had with all these different companies and, yeah. and they really helped you out, didn't they, and, and got you off to a flying start? They did, because a lot of the overhead that uh, we would have had, including rent and some of the infrastructure costs, they took on all of that. And the distribution, I mean, they were a, a, a tremendous partner for us, putting us on the radio stations. They've connected us with the Toronto Blue Jays, who remain a very strong partner of ours, and, and great opportunities like that to help spread our company brand in the early going when we didn't have that much funding or even expertise behind us. Uh, They were there as mentors as well. And um, yeah, I mean, as far as that incubator process went for us, uh, pretty quickly from the get-go of the site, it took off and people were listing their cottages and vacation rentals across Canada with us from the get-go. And our company grew from those two people initially to about 20 people before we really needed some space of our own. And, um, so we, uh, is, it, is that the point where sort of it's a, it's a bit like the um, kid coming of age and being kicked out of the house and off you go and do it, it by was, yourself? It was exactly like that, Heather. You know, we were the largest company at the time in Rogers Incubator. There was probably about four or five others. And we needed our own identity. We needed a chance to grow our own culture. We had 18 to 20 employees. And uh, yeah, it was exactly, it was time to 
to move out of our parents' house and into our own house. And we did that. We moved up the street um, to our current offices at Young and St. Clair area in, in Midtown Toronto. And uh, we've been here now for almost four years and um, have actually now expanded into two offices within um, the building that we have here. And just over 40 people are now at the company. So so great to hear how you went from from that little start and and got, got to where you are now. So in, in talking about where you are now, you started out as cottagecountry.com. And it's, uh, I, I guess, that, that title, that name, that branding – Talked about, talk to me about this area of Ontario because we call it cottage country. So, was that a determining factor to change it to Canada Stays? Yes, uh, absolutely. It, you know, as great of a name and as somebody who was raised in Ontario, it cottage country is part of our vernacular here. It goes with hockey and with beer, and it's it's really a true Canadian term and very early in our development and our growth, it was resonating with our customers as a lot of them were from Ontario. Um, but as we started to grow and accept a lot more inventory from different parts of Canada, we quickly saw that cottage country was a very Ontario centric term and people out in BC may not even refer to the accommodation type as a cottage. They may say cabin in Quebec, they may say chalet or summer home and Quickly, we had uh, all these different terms being thrown at us, and the name Cottage Country really just didn't reflect our inventory. Uh, so what would happen is people who are coming to our site would be shocked to find that we would offer great accommodations in Whistler or great accommodations in Tremblant or even here in Ontario in Blue Mountain. They really believed that we were just a Muskoka coverage company. And um, when we changed our name to Canada Stays after – a lot of work on coming up with the right brand and the right name for us. Uh, almost overnight, the name matched what we display on our website, which is inventory straight across Canada, uh, into the U.S., the Caribbean. And, you know, really, we, we try and be uh, the accommodation destination for uh, Canadians looking for vacation rentals. Because that, that's what it says to me now. It's it's. Canada stays means to me people staying in Canada or people in Canada staying somewhere else. So you've got the sort of the best of both worlds there. Yeah, thanks, Heather. And and it was really important to us. We wanted Canadians to get really comfortable with our website, using our services in Canada to book uh, vacation rentals in Canada, but then also to use Canada stays to book uh, accommodations around the world. And uh, once we had worked with them and they felt very comfortable with our site, it was um, it was very good transition to, to move them into booking some properties, maybe in the off seasons in Florida or in the Caribbean. But that was our main goal. Again, we, we aim to serve the Canadian market. We want the Canadian traveler to be booking properties domestically and abroad on our website. Uh, that is our, our really sole focus of the company. Yeah, it's, it's interesting because over the years, people have asked me, you know, where I, I've got a property in Florida or I've got a property in the Bahamas and I'm Canadian. Where do I advertise it? Because I want to attract Canadians. And that was always a tough one to answer because there really wasn't anything out there. I mean, they, you could put it on VRBO, but that's not necessarily going to be attracting the demographic that they wanted. So, so you know, you, you seem to have filled filled that gap and created the, the vehicle for, for Canadians to advertise their properties wherever they are. Exactly. So tell us about what happened earlier this spring and raising millions from HomeAway and Torstar. It, yeah, it was a turning point of our company. We had been working on it for quite some time and had actually had some conversations with the great people at HomeAway, and, and I say that um, everyone that we've met uh, from that company, and I've probably met about 40 people at that company, um, just a remarkable group of people uh, working very hard, very ambitious, and just some of the nicest people that I've come across in business and certainly in this industry. And that went right from the top um, when we started with their co-founders and started talking about how we could work together. And... Really, I guess as a company, we felt that um, we needed um, we, we needed more than just the funding. We needed to find a true partner who could really help us achieve significant traffic with our website. I call traffic demand to our website, but 
really turn on the demand. We always knew that after six or seven years, we had some of the best, if not the best, supply of Canadian vacation rentals anywhere in the world. But now we had to serve all these customers. And we were doing it with whatever funding we had, plus the help we had from Rogers. But um, as our properties grew, um, it became more and more apparent that we needed a true partner to help grow the demand side of our business. So we looked to the uh, the largest company in the world for vacation rentals, and we worked out an agreement with HomeAway uh, to, to partner with us on not just funding, but also cross-marketing where our properties could appear on HomeAway and their properties could appear on our website. And um, throughout that process, we were reaching out to some other really strategic uh, investors and Torstar uh, became a very great solution for us. Torstar with um, not just the Star properties, but all of their Metroland properties that really reached deep into communities in Ontario um, was another no-brainer for us. So we put together an agreement between uh, Torstar, um, uh, Homeway, and Rogers uh, continuing on with investing with us. And really, um, that closed uh, at the end of February, and it um, changed everything about our company in every way. Um, we, again, have a new, I like to call it a new mentor company, but HomeAway, it's not just the funding and the distribution, but they're really helping our company understand the vacation rental market, understand the traveler, and helping us to grow our product and make changes to our product. Since March, uh, we've added probably already 15 or 17 new people to our company with a heavy focus on product development, marketing, and most recently we've turned our attention to customer service, uh, where we've gone from a department of one to a department of six. And a lot of this um, strategy has come from discussions that we've had through Torstar and, and HomeAway and the board meetings and really guiding our company to serve Canadian travelers the best we possibly can. So um, we kicked off our marketing partnership uh, earlier in the month of June, and um, our entire company has changed. Uh, overnight, the amount of inquiries coming to our website has uh, increased five to ten times. Uh, our phone rings off the hook. Um, we probably are taking roughly 20 calls a minute uh, coming through our, our customer service. Uh, we've hired, as I mentioned, 17 or so new people. Uh, we've taken up another office space in the building and are now really in a position where the demand of our company is matching the supply. Uh, we truly have the ability to provide any Canadian uh, vacation rental listing with tremendous ROI um, advertised on our website. And our biggest goal right now is serving the travelers and helping the travelers book uh, very effectively and efficiently on our website. Um, the amount of inquiries are plentiful and owners are just receiving uh, tremendous results. And we're really, um, really, really excited about how things have started off with the partnership. with. Us. What are your goals for the future? What's, what's going to happen in the future? Well, I've been talking to you about this for a long time. I, I, I really believe that in Canada, we can't be behind the U.S. in technology uh, in this specific niche um, any longer. We, we have the opportunity to make this process as seamless as possible. And that, to me, means uh, people should be able to book vacation rentals almost as easily as they can book hotels. So my goals initially are to get our product in a place where we can achieve that goal. And it's quickly happening. I believe that over the next quarter, we'll take some significant strides to make booking on our website um, very easy. Uh, from there, customer service is a huge part of what we do. With um, the amount of traffic and travelers that we have on our website on a daily basis here, we need to serve those customers better. And that means taking that customer from their search right through to their booking, and then, of course, their stay and their experience and make that a very uh, a very pleasant travel. And uh, we're working really hard to uh, 
walk our customers through that process and work with not just the travelers, but also the property managers to help make this possible. And I think that if I look at two goals, it's the product development of our website to make it easy to use for both the travelers and the property managers, and then customer service, ensuring that these trips are booked um, with nothing but positive experiences. One of the things that I, you know, I, you come across on articles on Skift and the other travel uh, travel related websites where they're reporting on what's happening in the industry. And, and always you get this, this little thing that comes in about owners, you know, these pesky owners. Uh, you've just talked about property managers, but of course the, the bulk of listings are still going to be delivered into your site via those owners. And, and this is the issue with this market. It's just every single individual owner is just that, is individual, is unique, has their own wants, their own needs, their own perceptions and assumptions. How, how do you deal with that? Well, there's two ways. There's first, it, a lot of that falls on, our, on us and making sure that our product development is done in a way where it's going to represent and work with a lot of their feedback. So um, I myself talk with, the largest property managers we have. I also talk with some of the smallest uh, that we have so I can get feedback on both sides. Uh, we are constantly working at our product so that we make it for everybody uh, very easy to use and we work within their systems. Um, secondly, education. Uh, it is vital to our success that we educate all of the owners and that's the single owners as well as the property managers on how they can become better hosts and how they, they can manage this more efficiently. Now that the demand and their return on investment is so strong through Canada stays, we have to get them organized so that they can actually take advantage of this. Uh, it doesn't do the owner a lot of good to be taking in a lot of leads without actually closing them. And the amount of money that's at stake for these property owners is substantial. And so we need to work with them to teach them how they can um, not only close these and convert on these leads, but make sure that when the party arrives at their accommodation, that they have a really positive experience and teach them how to remarket to that person so that they can come back year after year. And instead of looking at it as a one-off um, travel experience, they can really start to build out a group of travelers that they feel really comfortable with coming to their properties that they're booking year after year and they're making the amount of desired revenue from their vacation rental. So again, it's our tools that we're working on to accommodate uh, all of these people. And it's also our education. And we, we look to third parties too, Heather, to help us with the education and to help us with really strong email campaigns so that we can educate and, and let everyone know what we're hearing from all of the feedback from our, our users. You make some some very good points there about, um, you know, it, it goes beyond just putting a listing out there and, you know, hoping they will come. Because with the competition there is now, there are, that, that there's a lot more to it than that. And I talk to owners on a, on a you know, daily uh, about this, that you, you, don't, you don't just sort of sort of start up at the beginning of season, walk away and then come back at the end and hope that all the people that came in the middle were had the same time, same good time. You know, that is cottage rental of old and, and it's changed just so dramatically over the past 10 years that it, it can be a little bit of a challenge to, to help those owners see that there is more to it than, than the listing. Right. And I think with the power of reviews and with the power of, um, you know, of, of all these customers pushing these owners to improve, we we have to always ask ourselves, the owners who aren't really taking this seriously and are, are not doing this with their full heart, you know, are they really somebody that should be renting their property? Are they really somebody that should be welcoming a family uh, with their precious vacation time into their homes? So, you know, we take a lot of uh, time and effort right now to make sure that our travelers are having a really good experience and owners, if they're serious about renting, they should also be serious about being good hosts to the people that are coming to their accommodations because for sure they're going to have very high expectations. Yeah. 
Um, just just tell me a little bit about uh, you, you know your competition. The Airbnb in in Toronto, in particular, is is looking to explore out into the um, the cottage market. How are you challenging that? Well, I would say that um, a company like Airbnb, they're doing a lot of helping us educate the the travelers and the property owners. They've got tremendous systems on Airbnb for booking online. And I think that the more that uh, people use their systems and other systems, like even an Uber for that matter, and get comfortable with the technology, the more people are going to be comfortable using uh, tools that you find on our site. Um, we, in terms of, of how we're doing it, I mean, we welcome the, um, the growth in the vacation rental market in Canada. Uh, Airbnb has a great product. They generally focus on shared accommodations and the urban market, but if they're branching out into the vacation rental market, um, you know, that's something that I believe is only going to help us. Uh, we have over 35,000 Canadian properties and growing. Uh, we have just a tremendous amount of supply and I feel um, it, you know, it, it is currently and will be for the near future the strongest place for anybody to go and search for a vacation home. Well, you're doing a great job and I shall look forward to seeing how, how it, it all develops over the next couple of years. So before we finish, Mark, what, what was your most memorable experience at a vacation rental? It was a winter experience and renting a vacation home in the winter in Ontario is a far different experience than in the summer. And my family and I decided to bring snowshoes up to um, the cottage. We were in Halliburton, I believe, and we went snowshoeing on the lake. Um, and it was just a tremendous day uh, with little kids and dogs. And it was uh, first time snowshoeing was just, uh, it, it was a very memorable experience. So I think that uh, that and some of the pictures we have of that event, probably right up there with my top memories at a vacation rental in Ontario. I'm really glad you mentioned winter w- winter rentals um, because, you know, I, I look back and coming out here from England and going to a going to the cottage for the first time and it was a winter rental and and the to walk on water was pretty special. It really is. <laughs> To actually walk across, you know, walking across a frozen lake at moon in moonlight has got to be one of the your best experiences ever. So, so yeah, well, I mean, that's something that we do all the time is try and promote this this winter experience just as much as the as as the summer one. So, really pleased that your memory goes to the snow and the cold. Yes, for sure. Mark, is there anything else you want to to mention that we haven't covered? No, I, I guess Heather, I just you know thank you for taking the time. It's you know looking back on the first interview we did compared to today, it's um, just you know worlds of difference in our company. And um, I guess the only thing I would say is you know here at Canada Stays, we are working really hard to progress the vacation rental market in Canada. Um, We are a group of dedicated people that uh, are ambitious and trying to make things easier for both the travelers as well as the property owners. And for you, Heather, you you do a great job at keeping everyone apprised of what's going on in the industry. And I really want to thank you for your time today uh, and setting up this interview. Well, thank you for that, Mark. So if anybody wants to go and check out Canada Stays, you can do so at canadastays.com. It's as simple as that. And I will put uh, that uh, email, uh, that web address in the show notes. And of course, if you've got any um, any comments you'd like to ask Mark a question, uh, definitely go down to the comments section in the show notes and, uh, and ask away. And I'll ask Mark if he will check in occasionally and, uh, and answer your questions. You okay of with course. that? Yeah, of course. Perfect. Well, thank you so much again for joining me. It's been an absolute pleasure to talk to you. You too, Heather. Thank you very much. So thank you, Mark. That was, uh, that was terrific. It was great to hear how uh, cottagecountry.com has evolved to, into Canada Stays and how the injection of uh, $6 million from HomeAway and the Torstar Corporation 
are going to is going to impact the company and affect its goals. And of course, along the way, help the owners, the property managers, and the travellers have a far better experience. And it, it has been great to watch this company um, grow and go from strength to strength. Mark and I have had our differences over the in, in the past. You know, we've um, I argued long and hard with him about three years ago about the whole issue of booking online. And I said, you know, nobody, nobody will ever do that. The owners won't stand for it. And, you know, I was perhaps showing off my 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 dinosaur um, tendencies. But I have, you know, I'm taking a, a little bit of a different viewpoint now. I know the whole book it now issue is is wide open for argument right the way across the industry. And we're going to see a lot of changes. But sometimes I think we've we've got to open our eyes to to change to to what's coming. You know, I I know there's a there's a movement out there to ditch listing sites altogether. Mark tells me that Canada Stays is not a listing site. It's simply a transaction site. It allows travelers to make that transaction in the way that they they want to, in the way that the modern traveler wants to book their vacation. You know, I know that if, if I'm going somewhere, I want to do it all online. I really don't want to um, talk much to people. I mean, I'm very happy for the owner of a vacation rental to get in touch with me and to talk about my goals for the vacation and um, they're going to check me out to make sure I'm the right match for their property. But you know, when it comes to paying for it, I don't want to write a check. I really don't want to do internet money transfer. And I definitely don't want to, to wire money. Um, back in February, we went to Exuma. We had to wire money for for the stay it cost us an additional $150 in the wire transactions. Nobody wants that anymore. So, you know, unless owners and agencies, and there's a lot of agencies now, and I pull my hand up and say that, you know, we are one of them that are still asking for checks. I think it's going to be the last year we do it. And nobody, because nobody has checks anymore. So perhaps we just need to start looking at the ways in which we are uh, managing those transactions. And if we can't do it ourselves in a way that the traveler wants, then we look to a third party to, to help us out. So I welcome your comments on that one. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm moving to a little bit of a different uh, frame of, of mind here from where I was three years ago. So, Mark, you're listening to the the end of this episode and chuckling probably that uh, you knew it all along. So, once again, that was, um, that, that was super to, uh, to talk to Mark, um, talk to somebody with whom I've had a, a great working relationship with for, um, for over six years now. And, Mark, I wish you all the best and uh, I wish you all the best for the future of Canada States. So I'd just like to thank you once again for tuning in to Vacation Rental Success. Uh, we're uh, moving onwards towards our 100th episode and there's going to be a lot coming out before then. We've, we've got a, some mega announcements to make, uh, which are going to happen over the next couple of weeks. Mike and I are working on something that is what we think is is groundbreaking and is going to give you the owner the the owner of an individual property the small agency owner and even the larger ones a massive resource to help you grow your vacation rental business and take it to the next level so keep listening keep checking out on the blog because we're going to have some really big news very very shortly so thank you for listening in. As ever, leave us a comment. You can email me directly at heather at cottageblogger.com. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you have a topic 
for a future podcast you'd like us to cover or if there's somebody you'd like us to interview. And, you know, that could be you. I'm really happy to hear from successful owners. If you've got something that you'd really like to share, you know what the format of this podcast is like. It's really casual. It's nothing to be frightened about. It's we just have a good chit chat. Um, you know, you make yourself a cup of coffee, I'll make myself a cup of tea and we'll just sit and have a chat. And if there's, uh, you know, a few hundred or thousand miles between us, it really, really doesn't matter. So let me know, send me an email. And if you like this podcast, please go down to the iTunes link at the bottom of the uh, show notes, click on there and go over and leave me a review. It always gives me the, um, you know, the warm and fuzzies when somebody says something nice and says they're listening. So thank you once again. So for now, I'm going to head out into the heat and the sunshine and probably take myself out on a kayak or a paddleboard and just go and enjoy the water. I'm going to go and pretend like I'm on vacation, like all our rental, all our cottage guests are at the moment. So talk to you again very, very soon. This episode of Vacation Rental Success is over, but don't worry, Heather will be back soon. Want more great resources? Visit cottageblogger.com for tips, tricks, downloads, and strategies to help you achieve profit from your vacation rental business. 